midday news and uh, we're looking at issues of crime this time around a number of uh, small arms have been within the country and there's a commission that is worried about the situation and i'm being joined by the chairman of the commission to take a look at the situation uh, the legal implications and how they can even get on the ground and ensure that those that are just uh, moving within the communities are brought under check and i have here with me jones apple who is chairman of the small arms commission you're welcome uh, to midday live Thank you very much, sir. I can see you, you have something on your jacket which has a badge with a crossed gun. Say no to guns. Perhaps. Say no to, to guns. guns. Yeah. Uh, of late, you seem to be very uh, particular about the issue of nibbing crime in the bad. You introduced a program where you are actually putting certain marks on guns to ensure that you can trace them when crimes happen. This time around, is it the same thing that you're moving on to do or you have a different perspective of ensuring that uh, crime is nipped by controlling the use of small arms? Um, thank you very much for your question. What we're trying to do uh, is just in response to the happenings in our country or happenings within our system. Mm -hmm. If you notice the recent trend in the media uh, we have seen a lot of reportages on um, crimes that have been committed using uh, small arms and light weapons. Uh, these things don't forbode well for a country like Ghana where we are still grappling with our development and our bread and butter issues. <laughs> so we think that as a commission that is in charge of the control, we should be concerned. So a number of initiatives have taken place. One is what you just mentioned, which is the marking of uh, weapons with the state actors. That is just an initiative to ensure that we get weapons with the state actors under control. Mm -hmm. um, there's one thing in gun control that you can only control what you have and what you know. And so the first and foremost place you have to tackle and make sure you have them tightly under control is the weapons that are with your state actors. If I say state actors, I mean the Ghana Armed Forces, the, I mean the military, the police, uh, immigration, SEPs and then the prison service. So that is what we are starting as a first point. This as a side, as you said, mm -hmm. will, uh, will be extended to civilian um, firearms bearers. What, the, what the, the current position of our regulation is that we just put a mark on it. Mm -hmm. This mask can easily be obliterated or easily erased when the weapon is used in committing a crime. Right. Now, with the issue of marking of the guns, which you're talking about, that can be erased. Let's move further. There should be a legislation, or there are legislation uh, that controlling the use and handling of arms. I'm told you are finding a means of ensuring that it becomes more stringent to help you combat uh, the movement of arms. Under our Act 118 Act of 1962, that is the, fire, the, firearms, the law that controls firearms in Ghana, mm -hmm. uh, the police service is supposed to put a mark on any firearm that they register. But this is not far reaching enough. As I just mentioned, these are things, this is just a mark, so they use a paint. Yeah. These are things that can easily be cleaned or easily obliterated as we use in Swarm's balance. And so what we are doing is trying to put the ECOWAS logo and the ECOWAS mark. You know, under the ECOWAS convention, all member states are enjoined to ensure that all weapons that come into your territory are uniquely marked to enable you identify that weapon against any other weapon in the world. Mm -hmm. So if we mark any, it also, if we mark all our weapons, it means that when a weapon from Ghana, whether in the civilian hands or in a state um, uh, um, service, leaks, we can easily uh, trace it to the source of diversion. Mm -hmm. So that is the marking that we're trying to do. But there are a lot of issues when it comes to our law. Uh, for example, um, in Ghana, for instance, the law doesn't really state the number of weapons that you can own. There's mm -hmm. no ceiling. In other jurisdictions like Brazil, South Africa, and Co. that I've seen, uh, there are ceilings. So you can tell you that you can only say one pistol and five shotguns. In Ghana, we have no ceiling. So uh, does it mean that an individual, a group of people, uh, wanting to protect their property can uh, even from a small army in terms le, of... Le, uh, uh, literally, literally speaking, yes. Um, any, once the law states what you have to do if you want to own a firearms, and by it doesn't state the number of firearms that you can own. 
and, and, and that, is this that is good enough for the country now that we have a lot of conflicts uh, in pouches of the country? Yeah, that is something that we are addressing. As, as I said, the law, the last time we did any review of our law on fire was in 1972. That's NRC. That is quite far. So, yeah. And we have signed on to a lot of international conventions and instruments. We have signed on to the United Nations Plan of Action. We have signed on to the International Tracing Instrument. We have signed on to the United Nations Firearms Protocol. We have signed on to uh, the recently arms trade treaty. We have signed on to a lot of uh, even the COAS Convention. But signing on to these treaties, do they really ensure that we have safety in here rather than to go on the ground and ensure that arms are not in the loose hands? The signing, you know, and, and when you talk about control, as you write, as you pointed out, it's about being it's about having the necessary legal regime to do what you want to do. Mm -hmm. So what these conventions do is just give is like a nibbler. It okay. tells you what you most of these conventions are good, they are excellent. If you decide to implement what is in those conventions, they are perfect too. What the issue is the domestications. You know, first of all, you have to find a way of domesticating the law. Right. If you look at our constitution for instance, it clearly stipulates the hierarchy of laws that our constitution and acts passed by parliament, customary before even international conventions. So what you have to do for it to have a force of law is to domestic. So most of these conventions are, are good. But your 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 suggestion also stands. Gun control, the crimes have been committed in our communities. Mm -hmm. You understand? So we have to get into our communities and engage them. Exactly. You understand? But, you know, when I was coming this morning, I was listening to uh, something from Joy FM that they, they were trying to run some stories about people who have suffered of arm robbery victims. And if you listen to some of the stories, you understand? Clearly, it shows that citizens are not playing the part that they ought to play in this issue of ensuring safety and security for all of us. I listen to the Dansoma story. So what should be citizens, uh, or what should citizens be doing to ensure all, that all uh, over, all guns are not just flying about? All over the world, sir, most of the people who commit the crime live in communities, mm. so they are known. Definitely. If you go to America, for instance, I believe you all know in most of the developed world, you can't just drive any car without the security is checking where you got the money to buy the car. So you see, go to London, America. If they are not sure of your income, you are driving a Range Rover. They will come and check how. All these things feed into uh, crime, crime detection, crime prevention. Mm -hmm. In Ghana, we see people driving their own all manner. What they do, you know, to get those things, nobody cares. And we just are happy and, you know, we, we, we set characters. That, that notwithstanding, the issue about, you ask the question about what should citizens do? Crimes puzzles that have been solved all over the world. Difficult ones are, so, are, are solved by citizens volunteering information. Mm -hmm. So I believe you have heard, I think there's a matter that you've overflowed. You've heard uh, even recently the regional commander calling the citizens to volunteer information because the criminals live in the communities. Mm -hmm. The Central Regional Commander, the COP Kofi Bwati has made that call, the IGP has made that, and I'm also making that call. The citizens, eh, you have to be alert eh, about your environment. I, in Ghana, for instance, in the Western world, crime is committed, and then they can, somebody who is just standing there can just describe the perpetrator. Oh, he was bearded, mm -hmm. he, was, he was looking, and they can draw you, and in fact, they use that. And so th uh, those can become so clues to trace you. To trace you, crime. and that is the kind of um, uh, thing we are encouraging our public to be alert uh -huh. about. Right. Finally, before um, where you had voluntary uh, turning in of guns, and this is a tricky situation because people may have five shotguns and they may tender in two or three. Uh, is there any means by ensuring that uh, these guns that are not tendered in could not be used to perpetrate crime? Because one, you talked about uh, even the communities themselves giving information to what is happening. Um, as for somebody who has a gun, if the person has legally acquired it, and he has five, and he wants to turn three in and keep two. Yes, the law doesn't frown on that for now, okay. so the person can. But reasons why people abuse guns are, are varied and myriad. Okay. There are a lot. Right. I mean, you've heard recently we talking about the unemployment situation feeding into uh, exchange the crime, of guns the, uh, for motorcycles the, the crime and issues stuff. that we hear and those those things that okay. have been talked. So there are a number of even people not wanting to play by the rules. Right. We'll leave it here. Thank you very much uh, for you. speaking Thank to us too. on midday live.